Hello everyone. This is just a little video asking for suggestions. I'm going to be starting a new Let's Play soon, but I'm unsure as to which game to do it on, whether to do it on ATS or whether to do it on ATS. So I have this and it's a randomizer. So the country, city and truck on ATS and state, city and truck on ATS are going to be completely random. They may well end up going to places that I've never been. They may start end up starting in a city, starting in a state, using a truck that I've never used for full on in either game. So I'm going to run that randomizer now. It's run through a script in Google Sheets. And while that's running, it'll take a few seconds. I have also established some uh, gameplay rules. And after we go through this, I'll then be going through the gameplay rules. There's mm, 10 of them. And it's mainly where we're going to be and it I I hope that the rules will make the game not harder so much but a more a more relaxed pace if you like um, I'm limiting myself to what we can do in terms of what we can take. I'm setting up a hard and fast rule for the skills and also for trailer purchasing. Uh, and one thing I will be doing is I won't be buying a truck until I'm able to buy a, a trailer along with it. So these are our choices. So in ETS, or ETS2 I should say, we're going to be starting in Sweden, in Stockholm, and it'll be Volvo. So it'll either be the FH Classic or the FH. Probably, let's be fair, it'll always be the FH in realism. Uh, because it's just a, a better truck than the classic, to my, my personal preference. Uh, Arizona in ATS, starting in Phoenix. And the favourite truck there is the Peterbilt. So we have the 389 or the 579. Mm, that's kind of mix and match, because they're both very good trucks. So, there are the choices. Please let me know. And I'll see you very soon to go through the gameplay rules. Okay, so we've been through the randomizer. And we're now going to take a look at the gameplay rules. So, this is, this is going to be set after we buy the first tractor unit, whether that be the Peterbilt on ATS or the Volvo on ETS2. So we'll be starting with a curtain slider or a dry van. And then after we've driven 10,000 kilometers or miles, we'll be moving to flatbeds or we'll have be able to use flatbeds. 20,000 will be containers. 30,000 will be insulated or refrigerated. That really is very good for ETS2 because you can use more, um, there's more frozen that gives you good money in ETS2 than ATS, or that's been my, my experience. After 40,000, we'll be able to do heavy haulage. So that's your low boys. Uh, so it's, uh, I also have the farm pack. So it's like 
combine harvesters, headers, uh, dump vans, things like that. Things of that nature. And at 50,000 kilometers or miles driven, we'll be looking at hazmat, which is your ADR. So that's your acid, your gasoline. Comes in very nicely with this one here, insulated refrigerated, because you can then take your ADR5, which is the toxic and infectious substances, and that allows you to uh, haul medical vaccines, which are in ETS2, pretty much outside of your heavy haulage. Your medical vaccines are really, really good for money. Uh, now we move back, kind of going backwards in a way, but all the quick jobs will be done with a curtain cider or a dry van. So, as I was saying, that will restrict our money-making opportunities because that is the lowest payment. Number eight, all the quick jobs are done with the favourite make of truck, so it's either going to be Peterbilt or Volvo. I am so glad it came up with Peterbilt. I really do like Peterbilt. Same as Kenworth, because they're basically made by the same company. Uh, it would have really distressed me if it had come up with International or Mac, because those two, quite honestly, I, I really don't like them. The mirrors and everything. And at the moment, I don't have um, an eye tracker. If I had something like that, uh, I'd probably be okay with them, because it's easy then to look outside the mirrors. Uh, all jobs, so this is quick jobs and cargo market, which is what it will be, will be taken using the price per distance, and it has to be the top result, okay? So even if something is going a thousand miles less, I'm going to be taking the one on the top because that's the rule and the price per distance will always be the top result will always be the best price per distance but it may not be the best price and all quick jobs will be taken from the previous city that you came to so you do Phoenix to Las Vegas you can't then just go on and go oh look at that there's a job in Austin Texas no I, I looked at it um, I had a little play with it um, in ECS funnily enough because obviously you do get the larger uh, circles which you can select even though you've never been there they tend to be more capital city type things and then taking a job from there and then moving eastwards across ETS I listed them down and then went running around finding flight prices and like, oh well I made 40,000 doing them and it's cost me two and a half grand to pay. That's very convoluted and it's a little bit too much like hard work and a bit too much playing about. So that's why I'm saying now we'll take it from the previous termination city. One I haven't put on here because I'm not sure about it. Uh, you can let me know what you think in the comments, is that uh, buying the tractor unit and trailer, once I have the money to do that, I'm going to try and make my way back to the city that we're starting. So that'll be Stockholm or uh, Phoenix. So even if I'm in ATS, for example, and I'm up way up in Everett, in Washington. I'm going to, going to have to make my way back to Phoenix. At that point, um, rule number nine will, in fairness, go out the window. Because what we'll do 
is we'll then be taking whatever job we can that leads us closer and closer to our home city. So, skills. Obviously, we have the five skills, and normally you'd vary them and say, yeah, we'll do this, and we'll do this, and we'll do this, and we'll do this. The way we're going to do this is between levels one and six, we'll be putting long distance. Seven to 12 will be high value. And of course, that leads us nicely into flatbeds. 13 to 18, fragile. As you can see, it's going down the list in the game. 19 to 24, is just in time. And 25 to 30, we'll be putting in ADR. Now, ADR, we won't be going left to right on it. The first one I'll be putting on that will be the toxic and infectious substances, ADR5. That'll be the first one, because that's, that's the best one to have, to be honest, in ETS2. In ATS, it'll probably start with gasoline or something. So that's the skills. That's the way we're going to be levelling our skills up. Trailers. Again, ties in with the gameplay rules in that the first trailer we buy will be a curtain cider or a driver. The second one we buy will be a flatbed. The third one we buy will be a container. The fourth will be the insulated or refrigerated. And the fifth will be a low boy. I may move that around and put insulated refrigerated as down here somewhere. But at the moment, that's probably what I will do in fairness. I'll probably put low boy as four, insulated refrigerated as five. The last one we will buy will be a tanker, which ties in well because the last skills we're going to level up are the ADRs, which work with the insulated refrigerated and with the tanker. So thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to your comments. And the next video will be a combined video on ATS and ETS where I'll be going through the mods that I'm going to be using. Uh, on ETS, I use approximately 25 mods. And on ATS, I believe I use 30. Uh, they're all from the Steam Workshop, apart from a couple, which are local. They're updated from very old mods that came out in the earlier days. And I just update them as they don't seem to be getting updated. So we'll be going through those on the next video. Thanks for watching and see you soon.